Welcome back to the channel. I'm Brian from Apex Auction Car Reconditioning. We're at the auto auction. A little early, not all of the vehicles are here, but I brought the Zurich ZR15, and we're gonna find some troubled cars where the check engine light is on, and we'll hook that up, and we'll see if we can diagnose, kind of zero in or pinpoint what the problem might be on them, just to show you that this is a great tool to take with on your um, search for any used vehicle. Let's get started. Okay, so the first one we'll look at today that could be the first victim is a 2010 Buick Regal. You can see the paint's fading here. That's no big deal. Sand that off. Has some attempts to fix some issues here and there. Some more paint issues. Not in crazy overall bad shape, but when we hop on in here and fire it up, we see we are greeted with the dreaded check engine light. So before bidding on something like this, you want to look into it further and see if it is a serious issue or possibly could lead to a serious issue, or if it's something simple that, uh, you know, you take the, the bid cap a little bit lower and give yourself some room to fix it. So let's hook up the code reader and see what we can find. So the first thing we do is put the key to the off uh, on position, and then we try and find the port which is always going to be under the dash here somewhere. And right there it is. All right, we'll let it cycle through, give it some time. Yes, I know. All right, so we have code P0016. Uh, camshaft position, that's a sensor. Uh, severity two out of three. That's normally not a bad repair. Crankshaft position. Common issues that can trigger the warning or the code would be viscosity of your oil, camshaft problems, VVT, variable valve timing system problems, faulty sensors such as the uh, crankshaft position sensor, and even timing chain and belt issues, which are no good. We, look, we can look closer into all of the ABS modules. asking if that's the vehicle that we're hooked up to. And uh, engine control module, powertrain control module, traction control, and ignition. So we can also go down into all module scan. Let's do that. You can see it's cycling through, attempting to make communication with all modules throughout the vehicle. Parking brake, um, transmission, ECM, your body control, window um, regulators, everything you can think of. These scanners or code readers can be found just about anywhere locally. Uh, Harbor Freight, CarQuest, um, Advanced Auto Parts. You can order them if you want to. If you have uh, Amazon Prime, they have, they have multiple units listed on Amazon from your simple $24.99 ones all the way up to $1,000 units. And I highly recommend looking into one of them. Um, you know, depending on how much it's being used, that's going to depend on your budget as well. But 
definitely recommend looking into carrying something like this with when you're looking into a used vehicle. All right, so we have uh, three codes and the engine control module. Three for the electronic brake control module. 13 for the body control module. Two for the front seating. And you can just scroll down through here, four for the remote heater, and you can see all of the issues that it potentially has. But with this one here, you're, you're probably looking at a um, crankshaft position sensor or something within that system. So it gives you an idea when you are adjusting your price or the cap that you're going to put on bidding for a vehicle at a certain amount. I normally come to these early and I'll run through all of these vehicles and uh, I'll come up with, with um, all of the pros and cons, make notes, and then go to lunch and kind of come up with a, a bidding cap to put on all of these vehicles that I would be bidding on today. Uh, let's see if we can find another one. All right, so here we, have, here we have a 2010 Cadillac DTS. Now, I would never consider one of these because of the North Star uh, engines. They are absolute garbage and cannot recommend, but it's a shame because these are great, comfortable cars. It's like sitting in your living room floating down the highway as we go to start it. We see that that check engine light at 186,000 um, is hanging in there and being very uh, very persistent. So, I mean, 186,000 on a North Star engine, you know, I don't know if that's good or bad. It has everything that's going to go wrong with it gone wrong and, and it's been repaired? Uh, or are you just about to get yourself into a headache? No way to tell, but let's hook up the code reader and see what problems we have with this one. All right, we hooked it up under the dash here and we're gonna let it go through its cycle. And we have a P0030 heater control sensor. Uh, pretty many codes here that are begging for attention. Resistance for heater. O2 sensor. That's not good. Issues that can trigger these codes, uh, malfunctioning ECM, engine control unit, uh, coolant temperature sensors, air intake leaks, exhaust leaks, uh, O2 sensors, as I mentioned, and will often probably throughout this video, and common uh, failed oxygen sensors as well. So the P420 code, and uh, that's... Sometimes, you know, when the catalytic, catalytic converters start to clog up and fail, that's going to be an expensive repair. You normally want to replace uh, the converters, some of the piping, the sensors, and you can get pretty close to 1500 bucks. So without this tool, you know, you wouldn't have known kind of what you're looking for. If you bid on something like this vehicle, then you want to take at least 2000 off the top of... Uh, <laughs> whatever this thing goes for and that would pra practically leave it at maybe bidding a thousand or twelve hundred for it if that you know we'll see how it goes all right the next one we can look at is a 2008 Dodge Journey now this one has I believe a little over 140,000 miles no 114,000 miles so that's not a whole lot but as this, you can see this one here has quite a few. Um, it's not happy. Let's just put it that way. It's not happy at all. Check engine light, ABS, traction control. Let's hook up the OBD2 and see what's going on. Yeah, it is not happy at all.
see how many codes we... All right, I'm going to guess 26 codes pop up on this one. Whoa. Just one of six here. Code P0716, turbine shaft. So this little cluster of codes that we're going to go through here tells me there's some problems with the transmission. Could be internal transmission failure. Uh, could be a faulty transmission control module or, or even the powertrain module. Could be transmission fluid issues, which that's never good either. Could be wiring problems or at the very least an input speed sensor uh, could be faulty or going bad. Either way, I would be running like hell from this one. I mean, the mileage isn't crazy at 114,000, but it's in pretty rough shape otherwise. You have to take in everything into consideration. And uh, so I write all this down, I make notes, take some snapshots with my phone, then I'll go to uh, take a break, grab some lunch, and I'll investigate all the codes, what it could lead to, um, the, the, the parts and labor that could be involved in a repair, and I'll have to take that into consideration because it's going to be the first thing you have to address, especially when these things are not inspected. And they need to be inspected and they need to be repaired to get them inspected. So you could be getting yourself into a huge headache. Here is an early 2000s GMC Envoy. Now this only has just a little over 100,000. I think it's, I think it's 104,000. And this one is going to grace us with a service engine soon light. A little over 200,000. So that's not a whole lot. I would never look at something like these because of the dry train. But even though this is 2001, 2002, it still has the OBD2 port. It's right down here. So let me, let me hook that up. Let's fire this thing up and see what is making this thing so unhappy. All right, so again, we come up with a crankshaft position sensor possible issue. Evap. P0440, just a quick warning, on some of these it could be as simple as the gas cap not being uh, attached properly. Common causes for this code to pop up would be gas cap, fuel neck filler, uh, evap hoses and lines, charcoal canister, valves, uh, fuel tank pressure sensors. All right, guys, so that gives you an idea of, of how much a tool like this can help. You can get some that with an app, you can connect to your smartphone and then just plug in the remote adapter for the OBD2. You can get some like the Zurich that I have here. There are many models within the Zurich, and I got this one at Harbor Freight to choose from. They are a great tool. Some of them can get expensive. Um, the dealership ones, you're looking at four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000, maybe even more. Uh, well, yeah, definitely more. And the more elaborate, I mean, but they can control modules within that and they can, they can manipulate things from the, uh, the unit itself where these are just a, a little bit more simple and give you an idea what could be wrong with the vehicles, which is a huge plus. If you're looking for a used vehicle, and you're looking for one on the cheap end, and if you're looking for one on the cheap end with higher mileage, it's going to throw a code. Um, some of these that don't have a check engine light could have been cleared, so I take this with and I hook it up anyway, and it'll uh, show me stored code, and that's very, very important. So I hope that helps. Look into one. I highly recommend it. This has been Brian from Apex Auction Car Reconditioning, and I'll catch you in the next video.